Good evening, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this evening's evening prayer. It's a Monday evening, Monday the 26th of June. So let's pray as we come to the end of another day. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and be not wise in your own sight. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and be not wise in your own sight. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and be not wise in your own sight. And our psalm this evening is Psalm number 72. Psalm 72. Psalm 72. First, the refrain, the Lord is king, let the earth rejoice. I'm, I'm smiling because there's a bird right here just uh, looking at me. Anyway, let's, let's pray. The Lord is king, let the earth rejoice. Give the king your judgments, O God, and your righteousness to the son of a king. Then shall he judge your people righteously and your poor with justice. May the mountains bring forth peace and the little hills righteousness for the people. May he defend the poor among the people, deliver the children of the needy and crush the oppressor. May he live as long as the sun and moon endure from one generation to another. May he come down like rain upon the mown grass, like the showers that water the earth. In his time shall righteousness flourish, an abundance of peace, till the moon shall be no more. May his dominion extend from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. May his foes kneel before him, and his enemies lick the dust. The kings of Tarshish and of the isles shall pay tribute. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall bring gifts. All kings shall fall down before him. All nations shall do him service. For he shall deliver the poor that cry out, the needy and those who have no helper. He shall have pity on the weak and poor. He shall preserve the lives of the needy. He shall redeem their lives from oppression and violence. And there shall their blood be in his sight. Long may he live. Unto him may he may be given gold from Sheba. May prayer be made for him continually. May they bless him all the day long. May there be abundance of grain on the earth, standing thick upon the hilltops. May its fruit flourish like Lebanon, and its grain grow like the grass of the field. May his name remain forever and be established as long as the sun endures. May all nations be blessed in him and call him blessed. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wonderful things. And blessed be his glorious name forever. May all the earth be filled with his glory. Amen. Amen. The Lord is king. Let the earth rejoice. Glory to the Father, 
and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And so the, the prayer, May your kingdom come, O God, with deliverance for the needy, with peace for the righteous, with overflowing blessing for all nations, with honor, glory, and praise for Christ, the only Savior. Amen. And so the, this psalm is a prayer for the king. But of course, the king is David, the king of Israel. But David is a shadow and a type of the true king who is to come, the Lord who is king, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. So may uh, nations shall bow before him, kings shall fall down before him, and nations shall do him service, verse 11. That's the ultimate king that is to come, where all the nations and all the kings of the earth will bow before this king. Not just some earthly king, not just a, a, an, an earthly monarch, but the earthly king is a foretype, is a foreshadow, is a type of the heavenly king, who is Jesus Christ our Lord. That's why it says, the Lord is king, let the earth rejoice our collect for this evening kindle in our hearts O God the flame of love which never ceases that it may burn in us giving light to others may we shine forever in your temple set on fire with your eternal light even your son Jesus Christ our Savior and our Redeemer Amen. All right. Um, our reading, our first reading, our first reading is from uh, Judges, Judges chapter 8, verse 22 to the end. <coughs> Judges chapter 8. Verse 22 to the end. The Israelites said to Gideon, Rule over us, you, your son, and your grandson, because you have saved us from the hand of Midian. But Gideon told them, I will not rule over you, nor will my son rule over you. The Lord will rule over you. And he said, I do have one request, that each of you give me an earring from you, your share of the plunder. It was the custom of the Ishmaelites to wear gold earrings. They answered, we'll be glad to give them. To give them. So they spread out a garment, and each of them threw a ring from his plunder onto it. The weight of the gold rings he asked for came to 1,700 shekels, which is about 20 kilograms. Not counting the ornaments, the pendants, and the purple garments worn by the kings of Midian, or the chains that were on their camels' necks. Gideon made the gold into an ephod which he placed in Oprah, Ophrah, his town. All Israel prostituted themselves by worshipping it there and it became a snare to Gideon and his family. <laughs> Seriously. Thus Midian was subdued before the Israelites and did not raise its head again during during Gideon's lifetime, the land had peace for 40 years. Jerubab, Jerubbaal, son of Joash, went back home to live. He had 70 sons of his own, for he had many wives. His concubine, who lived in Shechem, also bore him a son, whom he named Abimelech. Gideon, the son of Joash, died at a good old age 
and was buried in the tomb of his father Joash in Ophrah of the Abiz, Abiz, Abizrites. No sooner had Gideon died than the Israelites again prostituted themselves to the Baals. They set up Baal Berith as their god and did not remember the Lord their God who had rescued them from the hands of all their enemies on every side. They also failed to show any loyalty to the family of Jerubel, that is Gideon, in spite of all the good things he had done for them. So God raised up Gideon as a judge, a ruler, and a warrior, as it were, and, and Gideon was able to defeat the Midianites uh, without even fighting, really. And now, there, there are two things about this story. On the one hand, Gideon made an ephod, which is this, this, um, uh, this um, sort of ornament. Let's, let's leave it at that. An ornament from gold, from the gold that they took from the plunder. And Gideon sets, sets up this ephod um, in, in Oprah, his town, as a sort of ornament or a sort of emblem of a symbolic representation of, what he, of his victory. But guess what? The people starts to worship this ephod. You see, the, the, you, you set up something as a sort of a memorial and he and then it become a snare to Gideon and his family it becomes something like a trap instead of instead of drawing people to God it drew people away from God you know this is where in a situation where good intention turned out to be a bad result um, I mean he, his intention was good but the result was evil and 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 despite how God used him, he did he did something. Like that. And then of course the second bit is that God blessed the land because of Gideon. And for forty years, when Gideon was judge, there was no war, and the the land remained peaceful, and the people followed God. But as soon as Gideon died, they turned away from God, and they turned back to the Baals, the worship of the gods of the Canaanites. And again, they, they failed. And, and, and as time goes by, the people forgot um, Gideon and his victory and his family. And they moved back into pagan worship. So this is a, the book of Judges have this. You have the times when the people are turned to God and other times they turn away from God. So it's the... It's the it's the ebb and flow of the people of God. It still is, sisters and brothers, always the ebb and flow. God raised up mighty men and women who, who, who lead and, and, and give inspiration and direction. But after them, the people go back to their old ways and, um, and forget God and forget God's leaders and God's men and women whom he placed over them and so on. And, and throughout the generations, the church, the people of God in the Old Testament and the New have always had this sort of back and forth. God raised up anointed men and women to lead the people and they turn to him. And as soon as, as it were, they, they, they go away from the presence of those people or those people pass on, the people go back to their their usual way of doing things, their, their procrastination or their, 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 their laziness maybe, and, and, and even to their idolatry, in this case, to idolatry. All right, our, third, our, sec, our second reading, our New Testament reading, is Luke. It's from Luke, uh, Luke chapter 15. In verse 1 to 10. Luke 15, 1 to 10.
Now Luke 15 is a great chapter of the the, 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 the lost. Well, let's let's read it. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. And Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses, and loses one, one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulder and goes home. And he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who do not need to repent. Or suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. In the same way I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Amen. So in this story, in this chapter, Jesus gives us the three stories of the lost, of those who are lost, the lostness. And of course, we it all start talking about the lost sheep. The, the, you have a hundred sheep and one goes lost. You leave the 99 in search of that one. In other words, that one is just as valuable as the 99. Jesus doesn't say, well, I still have 99. I can leave that one to go die in the wilderness. No. He says, he says, you will, you, you, uh, you, you put as much value on that one as you do on the 99. And it's, a, it's an indication, sisters and brothers, that Jesus, uh, God, cares about each individual soul. Every, every individual soul God cares about. Not just the group, not just the community, not just the ethnicity, not just the country. God cares about the individual. And so when the individual sheep goes astray, God will search for that one. Because that one is valuable to him. So that's the sheep. But then the woman loses a coin. And she sweeps the house and looks everywhere for this coin. And then she finds it. Now again, a value... The, it's the value you place on the thing that determine how much, how much um, effort you put into finding that thing. If 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 you value, if you if you value the coin, if the coin is valuable to you, for this woman, this coin is valuable. She she turns the house upside down, in the sofa, underneath, lift up the carpet, everywhere. I must find this coin. This is not a coin. That I can just say, oh, the, you know, it's not like I have many more to throw away. It's valuable to her. And it's the value of this that Jesus is emphasizing in these stories. The value of the one, the value of the one sheep that's gone astray, the value of the coin that is lost. And God is the one searching for the lost one. And God will not stop until that one is found and brought home. The individual. And so this woman finds her lost coin. She calls the neighbors and everybody says, Rejoice with me for I have found my lost coin. And Jesus says, and this is a powerful um, climax to this, these two stories. There is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner. Who repents and that is the point this is again 
the individual matters. One sinner, you know, someone says, if, if you were the only person, if you were the only sinner in the world, Jesus would still come and die for you. That's how much he loves you as an individual. And this, these, these, these parables are about the individual. The, 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 that one person. You know, sometimes we, we group people in, in groups and we, we think of ethnic groups or communities or, 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 or race or, or, or whatever, or even countries. But in fact, Jesus is looking at the person as an individual. And he's saying that one sinner who repents and turns to God is valuable to God as much as the thousand others that are in the kingdom of God. And, and there is rejoicing in heaven. There is rejoicing in heaven. The saints are rejoicing. The angels are rejoicing. Every, all of heaven rejoices when one sinner repents. One. Now you would think, you know, when, when all of London repents, there would, be, there would be jubilation in heaven. Yes, of course. But let one person in London repent and turn to Jesus. And there is rejoicing in heaven. The saints rejoice. The angels are rejoicing. Because one sinner has come home. That is the point of these stories. And of course, the greatest story is yet to come. The story of the lost son. We have the lost sheep, the lost coin, and then we are going to have the lost son. But we look at that tomorrow because that is the that is the climax of these lost lost things, lostness. And of course, the point is is that we are lost because we are valuable to God. God will not. Uh, God, God well, put it in the positive. God will seek the lost. Jesus says, uh, the Son of Man comes to seek and to save the lost. And sisters and brothers, it's because we are lost why Jesus comes to save us. Uh, because we are, we are valuable to him why he, why he seeks us out. And he will not stop until we are brought in to the kingdom. And there is great rejoicing over one. Over one. I, I find that just remarkable. That every time a sinner turns from their sin and turn to God, all of heaven rejoices. There is dancing. There is rejoicing. There is praising in heaven over one sinner. Who turns. And so sometimes we say, oh, it's just one. Yes, but it's one valuable soul that is that is precious to God. And God values that individual as much as He values a thousand people in, in a group. He values every single one. The 99 are valuable, yes, but He will leave that 99 to go in search for that one. Because that one is precious to him. Sisters and brothers, I am that one. You are that one. No matter what we've been through, no matter who we are today, we are valuable to Jesus. We are precious to God. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for bringing us to the end of another day. We are grateful, O oh God, for the grace that you have granted us to see to see this evening, to see the end of this day, and we pray, we thank you for the value that you've placed in us. We are the lost sheep that you have searched for. We are the lost coin that you, that you turn the world upside down to bring us into your kingdom. And when we come, when we are found, when we repent and turn to you, there is great rejoicing. Because you love us, you love me so much. And so Lord, thank you for the value you place on me, for the precious love 
that you've lavished upon us as individuals, as special in your sight. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, we pray for the church. Renew your church, O oh God, for mission and service. And make her here and everywhere a living fellowship of your spirit, revealing your love to the world, reconciling humanity to you and with one another, serving all who are in need for the glory of Christ, our risen and exalted Lord. Amen. We pray for those who are on our prayer list. We ask for God's grace upon them. We pray, Lord, for, for those who are sick and those who are in need of your grace. We pray for Doreen, Jean and Walter, Monica, Dion, Sue, Veronica and Chester, Dolly and Desmond, Jean Murphy, Johanna, Pat and Ray, Pauline and Mom Daphne, Muriel, David, Surya, uh, Veronica, uh, Monica and daughter Cheryl, Una, Charity, Pippa, Duke, Radcliffe and Pauline, Catherine, Sarah and our Archdeacon Elwin. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember, O oh Lord, those who have passed from this life into your presence. We pray for our sister Thelma and our sister Hannah. May they find rest and peace in your kingdom. We pray for their families as they mourn the passing of their loved one, that they will be comforted by your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world in which we live. We, God of the nations whose kingdom rules over all, have mercy on our broken and divided world. Shed abroad your peace in the hearts of men and women everywhere and banish from them the spirit that makes for war and conflict. That all races, peoples and nations may learn to live in peace as members of one human family in obedience to your laws, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue to pray for peace in our world, peace in the Middle East, peace in Jerusalem, peace in Israel, peace in Syria, peace in Ukraine. Lord, we pray that you will destroy Putin's weapons of war and his plans for war so that this war will come to an end we pray and the people of ukraine will go back go home and and live in peace again return to their homeland in peace lord we pray for the people of sudan we pray again that you will bring an end to that civil war and that the people that are refugees in other lands will be able to return to rebuild their homeland so, Lord, wherever there is conflict, wherever there is discord, wherever there is disharmony, we pray that you'll bring peace, bring wholeness, bring your, your, your grace to bear in the places of division in our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> And we pray for the salvation of the world. Lord Jesus Christ, you love this world so much that you gave your life for the salvation of this world. We pray for every man, woman and child in every corner of our world, that they will hear the gospel message and be transformed by the power of your Holy Spirit. We pray for every country on the planet, for every tribe, for every language and for every and for culture every culture to hear the message of your love for them raise up pastors and evangelists to bring them the gospel to the far reaches of the world open their eyes to see jesus and 
soften their hearts to turn in repentance and faith to the only one who has the power to change their lives, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We pray this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. And we continue. We continue to, to pray for five, at least five people that we that are on our hearts, that we would like to see converted to Christ. We would like to see their lives transformed. We would like to see their, 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 the scales fall from their eyes like blind Bartimaeus, like Paul, Saul, whose blindness opened his eyes to the truth. And so, Lord, we pray for at least five people in our families, in our in our circle of acquaintances, friends, people who we know, Lord, that they their hearts may be melted by your truth. And their their lives will be transformed by your gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come my come my light and illumine my darkness. Come my life and revive me from death. Come my physician and heal my wounds. Come flame of divine love and burn up the thorns of my sins. Kindle in my heart with the flame of your love. Come my king, sit upon the throne of my heart and reign there. For you alone are my king and my lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the way, the truth, and the life. Let us not stray from you who are the way, nor distrust your promises who are the truth, nor rest in anything but you who are the life. For beyond you there is nothing to be desired, neither in heaven nor on earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so, our, our final prayer tonight before we go. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord give his, you rest and peace tonight, sisters and brothers, as you sleep. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good night, sisters and brothers.